I'm not that sold on Brock Lesnar. You know when you can yeah. you can tell somebody doesn't really enjoy fighting. I know Brock Lesnar doesn't enjoy fighting. I've seen him run away and scurry away and roll across the across the octagon canvas, get away from uh, um, Cain Velasquez. It's clear he doesn't enjoy fighting, and I'm not really interested in watching people that don't like fighting. I mean, you know, obviously if he's fighting, I'm going to watch because it's kind of like watching, you know, the old school. Uh, you know, freak show matches that we used to see in, in Pride and stuff where you've got some sumo wrestler fighting a guy that's a uh, 172 pounds and uh, you know was it uh, what was his name Emmanuel Yarbrough fought in one of the early UFCs yep like it's, it's that kind of fight to me it's a bit of a it's a bit of a sideshow because I don't take Brock Lesnar particularly seriously especially not because he had his 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 suit trousers tucked into his sorry suit pants I, I'm, I forget I'm broadcasting to America suit <laughs> pants tucked his into knickers. his <laughs> into his brown cowboy boots when he was pushing DC I completely yeah. looked past all the drama and was more interested in what the hell he was wearing is that fair though to a guy that beat Shane Carwin Frank Mir Randy Couture I mean I, I, I'm with you like he is deathly afraid to get punched and we've seen it multiple times but he overcame even with that still as a factor, right? That's I, I, I'm clearly with you, and we've heard rumors and stories of how even in training, his training partners aren't allowed to punch him, like aren't allowed to strike, just because he's that deathly afraid, and he's that's how he's treated his mixed martial arts career. But he still knocked out Randy Couture, knocked out Frank Mir, had one of those amazing comebacks I've ever seen live when he came back against Shane Carwin, like. Is that still the guy? Do you still not give him credit despite what he has accomplished? You know, I, I, I do. I appreciate I appreciate that he's got some wins on his record. Ultimately, when he fought Randy Couture, you know, Ra Randy was in, in, in the golf years of his, of his career. He shouldn't sure. have been in the octagon, especially not fighting someone of that size. Um, you know, this, this is where the argument comes in for the super heavyweight thing, because Brock Lesnar was cut into 265. He's a, he's a huge human being. And against anybody, in, you know, with any style of, uh, of fighting, that's going to be a problem. What is your initial knee-jerk reaction upon hearing this news? So my initial knee-jerk reaction goes to think about, like, age, health, and money. When okay. I think about the reasons why he might retire, I mean, I guess knee-jerk is like, I kind of believed it. I know you said you didn't, and I was like, hmm, it could be a ploy, but I don't know why my gut instinct was like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, it, it does. Like, he's 41 years old. He's made a yeah. lot of money. I know he stepped away from um, MMA because of health reasons, you know. Um, then there's the drug testing thing, the WWE. Like, there's a lot of things that kind of could not line up in order for him yeah. to come and then And then there's also the fact that they want him to fight Daniel Cormier. Like, are you joking me? Like, we know. Come on. That's a, that's a death sentence for Brock Lesnar. I, I mean, I don't... I, <laughs> Nobody can tell me that, that Brock Lesnar is going to win that fight, especially being out for that long. So maybe he just doesn't want to walk that tightrope. Steve Amiocic and Daniel Cormier is happening in August in Anaheim at the Honda Center. Uh, do you like the matchup? Well, for me, yes, of course. You know, I've talked about this before that I think that, that Stipe deserved the rematch. You know, the fact that he was the, the, the longest reigning UFC champion and uh, heavyweight champion, excuse me, in, in history. And, um, you know, I think that he kind of got caught. I think he had a little bit more to offer. I would love to run it back. I really enjoyed it. I was invested in that fight. And I thought it was... You know, I thought it was mind blowing how it went. I thought it was incredible that Daniel Cormier knocked him out like that. Like, I would like to see it again. I want to see him run it back. I want to see if Steve Bacon make those adjustments. If, if you know, Daniel Cormier can get it done again in the same fashion or in a different fashion. You know, I think it would be a. It, I think it was a great fight, and I don't know what people w would be complaining about. I mean, if you if you want to watch. MMA and you want to be entertained there is absolutely nothing that you can take away from that first fight that indicates anything other than that so why why wouldn't we want to see it again like I I would absolutely like to see that matchup 
you can argue other heavyweights who aren't coming off losses deserve it deserve it over someone who's coming off a loss. Period. If that's your blanket statement, a guy who lost is below a guy who's coming off a win. I get that. I don't think it's always accurate, but I get it. Saying Brock Lesnar, Brock, I'll say it again, Lesnar, who did not get a an actual win over Mark Hunt. He got a win, pissed dirty. It was stripped from him as it should have been. This is a guy, not only coming from pro wrestling, the whole thing, blah, 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 blah. This is a guy, in this instance, when we talk about a fight with Stipe, who hasn't had an official win in nine years since defeating Shane Carwin, he is 0-2-1. 5-3 is his career record. That does not deserve a title shot. Period. End of sentence. You can have... The wacko, you know, CM Punk stuff on a main card, okay, I I don't agree with it, but all right, fine. Title shot should just be more special than that. I mean, okay, here's my, here's my deal. I do want DC to make the biggest payday he possibly can. He's going to do all right with a Stipe rematch, okay? He did all right stepping in to take on Derek Lewis. He, you know, he's he's been paid okay. Also, can you devalue? the belt by giving Brock a shot at it because you want to be a nice guy to DC like yeah I I want DC to get the heavy pay the, the huge payday too but at the expense essentially of the title he holds you're a really nice guy we're gonna give you a, a, a title defense against a guy who doesn't deserve it at that, that that's not great to me you know what I mean it's just like okay I, I I get the logic and I like DC having that that payday opportunity but you're also a professional. You're at the top of the sport. You're the champion. You should only be taking on people who are at the top of the sport. Is is there one fighter that you think you match up the best with and one fighter you think would be the most challenging matchup? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that uh, Weidman and Gaston is the uh, easy fight than Miguel Romero, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that, you know, Starlight's probably Romero and Whitaker is probably the, the toughest one, Starlight. Uh, and I think that uh, Adesanya and uh, Gessler and, uh, and uh, Wildman is probably uh, easier. But, uh, you know, they're not easy, don't they? You know, they're really sure. good tough fighters. And <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, there is something about Romero with his extreme physique, his wrestling background, and his unpredictability that makes him a really hard fight, you know. Uh, and uh, Whitaker, I think, is super solid. He's, uh, always performing and he has great combinations and uh, uh, you know I think he's uh, a little bit more of a com- 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 complex fighter than, uh, than the other guys. I think I'll match up uh, very well uh, with uh, uh, Chris Weidman. I think we have pretty similar skills. And uh, Gaston, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, you know, my ground game is uh, far above his. I-, I can see him beating all those guys. Do you think you're at a point in your career where you're able to not handpick your opponents, but when you say, I want this guy, the UFC will listen? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think okay. that's it. Very, very honest. <laughs> yeah, no, that's honest. Uh, yeah. I, I just hope that what makes sense for me makes sense for them. You know? And at the moment, what makes sense for me is that uh, the original fight that was supposed to happen in Fort Lauderdale was Joel Romero and Paulo Costa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think those two guys probably should fight because of they, they were scheduled before. And uh, then uh, I see the rankings and I see, you know, uh, Jackery beat one man. So, and uh, Gastelum, he comes from a loss, but he comes from a loss from the interim champion. So I think I should fight uh, Gastelum and uh, Joel Romero and Paul Costa uh, should fight. And then the winner between me and Gastelum should fight the winner between uh, Costa and Romero. And then you have the guy, yeah. And then uh, the winner there will fight the, the winner between Alessandro and Whitaker. So uh, to me, it seemed like Al Quinta has calmed down a little bit over the last few years. You know, before it would be like he was just feuding with the UFC and he was tearing up our hotel rooms and he was he was being raging Al. And he seemed to have calmed down a little bit. One is that I, I hope that's not true because I love Crazy Al the most. Um, you tell me, how, how has he changed? Not so much as a fighter, but as a man, the last few years. Yeah, unfortunately, RJ, I think it is true. I think Darn we're it. seeing, too, even in the ring, which I think is great, is we're seeing the, the maturation of Ally Aquinta as yeah. a person, 
you know, and as a fighter, I think he's definitely more calculated in the ring and he's more calculated outside with his, you know, his real estate business and the way he conducts himself. And I'm, I'm sure he could go off the rails here and there, but for the most part, I really think he's really matured into just a great guy. And, he, you know, he has a great family. His mom and dad are both school teachers. His sister's a lawyer. So he comes from really, like, great stock. And, you know, I think at the beginning, you know, he was a little bit rebellious. But I think, again, I think it's what I love about it more than anything. He's matured as a person, which really, I believe, he's really, you're seeing a mature ally quicker in the ring, just enjoying himself and doing what he has to do. Did, did you notice a difference after the Khabib fight? I mean, obviously it was a it was a loss, but it was a short notice fight. He took him five rounds. He stuffed some takedowns in the later rounds. You know, I would imagine that, that as a fighter, from from my perspective as a fighter, I would get a lot of confidence from that because I would be thinking with a full training camp, especially now I've been in there with this guy, I've got his number. Yeah, great question, and I can tell you as a trainer, I couldn't have been more impressed by what I saw that night, only because I know the way he trained. For that fight, we did absolutely no wrestling for that fight, no defensive wrestling, and uh, to take that fight and to put on the performance he did, I, I don't even look at that as a loss. I really don't. As a trainer, I think he really helped his confidence in every aspect, because, I mean, come on, Khabib's mauling people. He's not yeah. just beating them, he's, he's, he's mauling them, and this kid survived two hard rounds, was coming back, you know, made it an entertaining fight. I don't care what the scorecard said, you know what I mean? He, I think he... He made that entertaining without, you know, any time that fight's on its feet, anything can happen. And uh, I think that was a huge step in what we're seeing right now. All right, so Donald Cerrone posted this recently. And he's saying that... Well, that you broke can, back you mountain vibe in that yeah, right? picture. Look at that go, bro. All right. That's here. also... I think that's kind of funny, too, that he posted this kind of picture, but I don't know. So what's, what's the Cowboy say here? He just says good news, and he tagged Conor McGregor. Looks like we get to fight for the 155 interim title, America versus. Hey, is there Ireland. anything lamer than interim titles? They make zero sense. They do nothing but create controversy, mm -hmm. which is why the UFC does it. But um, why would there be an interim title? What about Tony fucking Ferguson? What about that guy? Um, and then interim interim title. That means. Um, Khabib's not going to fight for a hot second, yeah. so that's why they're doing that. Mm -hmm. And then Connor Cowboy makes all the sense in the world. Shout out to Cowboy. Great fight for Cowboy. Great fight for Connor. It makes all the sense. The interim title makes no sense. Um, I'm glad it's happening. It's probably going to happen this summer, I would assume. But do you think that's really what's happening, or is he just trying to get them to do it? No, it's happening. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Fuck yeah, it's cool. Cowboy deserves it, man. Oh, yeah. Another thing happened, though. So after Anderson lost, Conor McGregor made a post about fighting Anderson Silva. I won't even entertain this. Anderson is one crafty, crafty martial artist. You only develop these methods through years. Hard, but I'll catch veteran big boys. It'd be an honor. Yeah. It'd be an honor to watch him. Uh, what else? <laughs> he says about Nate. And then uh, Anderson was said this in the Octagon. I think it makes sense for me and Nick to fight in Curitiba. Um, book it off eight night, Nate on it, Connor said. So, yes, this is what I think happens for Connor. I think Connor fights Cowboy, then fights Nate, and then that's it. I think he makes a gajillion dollars fighting Cowboy, a gajillion dollars fighting Nate, and then that's it. Wow, super, super rich. All right. Call super the... rich. I mean, he's re going to be ridiculously rich. Mm, yes. His his whiskey, uh, he, he doesn't need to fight. His, so, well, yeah, why would he? So what? Why not? He loves to fight. I, I I wouldn't fight, but look at me. I fucking tell dick jokes. <laughs> All right, Karen. All right. Okay, so this is a video of Stipe Miocic. Miocic, right? Miocic. So Stipe was talking about Daniel Cormier and the rematch, and he's saying that he owes it to him. And this is a, like a video that is on Stipe's personal YouTube channel that he did, right? So I'll play you this. a personal YouTube? Yeah. I guess he just launched a channel recently. Good for him. And so in the old video, he was talking about his, his new daughter and how it's changed his life. He didn't know love. It's very, very heartwarming, right? Love it. And then this is where... How long is the video? It's pretty long. So too long for, Five minutes, yeah. for me to watch. So yeah. I'll show you this part, though. What is getting this fight back? Everything. Brings me back where I need to be. Because I think about it every day. About him beating me and knowing I, I should have beat him. It's not even about me getting that belt back and beating him and knowing that I truly believe I can beat him. But also to show my daughter when she gets older that 
no matter how hard you get knocked down, you get up, you dust yourself out, keep moving forward. I mean, DC stand up guy, we, we shake hands, we see each other, I play with, you know, with his kids when I saw him, we wrestle around with each other, you know, we stab each other, you know. Oh, damn. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I honestly do believe he, he owes me this one. That was the Seriously. quickest hug of all time. But <laughs> I usually don't do that. I'm usually pretty strict to what I do. I had one lapse and I lost the belt. Anyhow, so he's not one to talk smack, right? Really? No. So after DC saw this, this is how he replied through his Twitter. I don't owe anyone shit. Do you guys want to know why I'm not fighting Stipe? Question mark. Apparently, a lot of people said yes. And they put <laughs> reason one: he's being entitled. Why have I fought since he hasn't? He lost the fight, and he is still the champ? Question mark. Reason two: I'm hurt. Legit reason. Reason three: How do I do? How do I do it better? I beat him in a round last time. Mm -hmm. Good point. Like, yeah, you're not going to just dominate the champ more than you already did. You starched him in the first round. I see both guys' sides. I see both sides. It's kind of weird though, because that video is so heartwarming. And then DC just, I don't know. Does it seem like he's coming off as kind of a mean? Um, Not mean. DC just doesn't want the fight. It's not the big fight because, you know, DC has two fights max left. Yeah. Ma -ma -ma max. You, you're not going to do it with Stipe because it just wouldn't be a big hyped fight because yeah, you've already true. beat him in the first round. You starched him. Stipe has never been a huge draw he's never been a huge fan favorite even though i love him and he's one of the, if not the most successful heavyweight of all time he's definitely one of them um and he's a firefighter but you know when we talk about the it factor he just didn't have it and that's why the ufc is not granting him an immediate rematch which they probably should but because he's for the reason not quote unquote marketable he doesn't get the rematch so that's that's the way the entertainment era works right now which is a shitty deal if you're steep so for dc i get what he's doing if i'm dc though i don't do this I don't say anything. Mm. Cool, keep making the videos. Cool, man. Waiting for John Jones' contract and Brock Lesnar contract yeah. to come. But I, with DC doing this, he's not going to win any fans over doing this. DC could have just, you know what DC could have put? Reason number one, I'm hurt. Yeah. Reason number two, I want to make a shitload of money. And as good as Steve Bay is, it's not going to be with you. Reason number three, I just don't want to fight you. Reason number four, I start you in the first round. Reason number five, that's it. Just honesty, right? Yeah. But don't don't belittle them and stuff like that. Yeah. That's not good. Well, Steeper responded to that too. Yeesh. And then check out how he responded. <sighs> Something about being a firefighter? Yeah. Uh, of course. At DC, my entitled ass offered to fight you at UFC 230 on November 3rd at Mass Square Garden. You fought Lewis while I was fighting fire. Oh. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.